You know who's got milk? India. India is the world's biggest producer and consumer of dairy. In 2018 alone, India produced 186 million metric tons of milk, about 410 billion pounds, and 22% of the milk produced globally. Almost all of that is consumed domestically thanks to India's dairy-heavy diet. Think creamy curries, yogurt drinks, and a popular type of butter called ghee. A quick note before we proceed. This includes milk from buffaloes, which are an important source of milk in many developing countries. Milk, it's not just cows. Anyway, the point is that India loves milk. In 2011, the French dairy company Danon hoped to capitalize on this by opening a division in India. Danon opened its own processing plant in Haryana and tried to capture some of India's 1.2 billion dairy lovers. But less than a decade later, Danon shuttered their dairy business in India. That same year, the company made $28 billion worldwide and was in the top three global dairy companies. With all this success elsewhere, why did Danon's dairy business sour in India? Let's start with some background on Danon. Their business is broken down into three categories. Specialized nutrition, like supplements and formula for babies, bottled waters and seltzers, and dairy and plant-based alternatives. That one makes up over half of their global sales, but it's also the one that failed in India. Danon does still sell specialized nutrition products in the country, but they don't break out those sales figures separately. Oh, and yes, this is the same company as Danon in the US. The company decided to rebrand to make the spelling less confusing for American consumers. Anyway, now for some background on India's dairy industry. There are about 75 million dairy farmers in India. Most of them are women who own one or two buffaloes or cows to supplement the family's income. Nearly half of India's milk is not sold, but consumed by the farmer's household. This makes India's dairy industry far more fractured and localized than other countries where Danon operates. Take the company's native France and one of its biggest customers, the US. Each has far fewer dairy farms with herds that dwarf India's one or two animal average. This was Danon's first big problem in India. Sourcing milk is difficult. Of the half not consumed by farmers' households, only about 15% goes to big organized companies or government-run cooperatives. The rest goes to hundreds of small local milk processors. So they're not very large farms which are out there from where you can go and just source the raw milk. But they are, let's say, the local companies who have very deep stronghold in that particular area where farmers will only sell to them. Because the farmers have this commercial understanding with these people over years or decades, they will only sell to them. Milk in that way, or uh, dairy products in that way, do well over the long run. And that's what Amul has done, or that's what Mother Dairy has done, because they've built that infrastructure over years. Versus having to do all of that by yourself, you'd never be able to match the volumes that therefore these brands produce. Even the largest companies like Amul, Mother Dairy, and Nestle have tiny percentages of the market, and they've been there for decades. Market research firms Mintel and Euromonitor declined to release specific market share numbers to CNBC. However, a 2016 piece in the Economic Times of India citing Euromonitor put the figures at about 7% for Amul, 3.7% for Mother Dairy, and 2.9% for Nestle. In short, tapping into the existing dairy infrastructure is effective but time-consuming. Imagine the effort of contacting dozens or hundreds of local and regional dairies, processors, or individual farmers. But establishing a separate supply chain altogether is very expensive, a lesson Danon learned the hard way. They bought the cold chain, they bought the supply chain in, and that's how they were trying to source their product. That in itself becomes really difficult to maintain. In terms of cost, it becomes really expensive. And when Danon did get milk, the company focused on the wrong products. Danon pushed plain yogurt and flavored yogurt drinks, popular in places like the US and France with high profit margins to boot. But in India, around the time when Danon arrived, yogurt comprised only 7% of the dairy consumed. The real money was in ghee, a type of clarified butter, and plain old fluid milk, a product with razor-thin margins dominated by those hundreds of local small-scale producers. The only way to have significant business in India was that if you are selling liquid milk. And the liquid milk is a highly, highly competitive market and there's hardly any 
margins in there. If you were just selling liquid milk and competing with the local farmers, there was no way they could have made any uh, sufficient margins to survive as a business. In India, most of the players that are already in the packet yogurt business have other businesses which I would say cushion their bottom line. Analysts explained to CNBC the simple reason why Indian consumers shunned Dannon's prepackaged yogurt. People make yogurt at home, people make cheese at home. So they don't buy yogurt or cheese from outside, they just buy milk and they do it themselves. And they consider it fresh, they consider it well, and it's cheap. And if Indian consumers did want to buy pre-made yogurt, they had a slew of cheaper options than Dannon. Dairy never accounted for more than 10% of Dannon's sales in India, a far cry from its global 50%. Its specialized nutrition arm picks up the slack, and the company announced a renewed focus on that division when it shuttered its dairy operation. <music> Meanwhile, two of their biggest competitors, Amul and Nestle, made nearly 5 billion and 750 million from dairy, respectively. But not all hope is lost for Dannon's dairy in India. In January 2018, the same time that Dannon ended its dairy production there, the investment arm of the company announced its part in a $26.5 million investment in Epigamia, an Indian yogurt startup. This could be a sustainable move for Dannon in India's dairy industry because Epigamia offers consumers products that add value beyond the plain yogurt they can make cheaply at home. But perhaps most importantly is this. While much of the population still makes yogurt the old-fashioned way, analysts predict that a growing number of consumers will want to buy pre-made options as they move into corporate jobs in developing urban centers. But there are certain sections in urban markets where the people who are educated, both the people are working, they don't run their kitchen like the way their mothers used to run. So they are buying these packaged products and uh, this, this trend has been picking up very, very quickly. Still, there will be a large section of Indian society where the you know, people will take very long time to convert to ready-made, packaged and then value-added products. But uh, the one which is converting, even if it's small percentages, they add up to very large numbers. Very large numbers indeed. If only 5% of India's 1.35 billion people decides to buy pre-packaged yogurt, that's over 67 million consumers, more than the entire population of Dannon's native France. Consumers are becoming very busy and therefore they are looking for the ultimate thing which is convenience. But having said that, it wouldn't be the typical kind of convenience that you're looking at when you're comparing it to maybe a Europe or, or USA because Indian consumers still latch on to authenticity. They have that typical authentic taste that that your mom used to make, for example. So yeah, that's the, that's the kind of balance that brands would then probably need to keep in mind 